From Cali to Tally, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source, and this is Wake Up Warchant. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. I'm Aslan, he's Corey, it's Wake Up War Chant, you already know that. I say that every single day, one of these days I will not start to show off like that, but for the time being, I'm going to. Corey, you're here, we're in the Midtown offices, we're everywhere. We have offices in Southwood, we have offices in Killarn. Stop touching your microphone, we can hear everything when you're touching your microphone like Sorry, that. We have fault. offices in Midtown and we have offices in Buford. We do, we're all over the Southeast, really, if you Blanketing think about it. it. Blanketing uh, yeah. it like Levante Taylor, man, securing the bag, if you will, almost. <laughs> sure. That's what you worked on today, right, or the other day? Well, Monday I wrote. It took me, you know, it was a 15-minute story. It was a throwaway story. Much like this season is a throwaway season. That was a uh, – can't was say a, that, Corey. You are the beacon of hope for the entire fan base right now. People are really rallying around you on social media and the Internet, and I'm being totally serious. Oh, well, that's good. The, the whole – Listen, Kirby, you know, stumbled out the blocks. Look how good they're doing. Every the, a lot of people are subscribing and buying into that. They like that a lot. Yeah, and I in uh, I mean, Lord, we'll, we're going to be talking about this season. We're going to be talking about this literally for the next probably fifty weeks about how you can't judge somebody on their first season. Yeah. Um, and again, I I want to point out just because Kirby did it and Saban did it. And Jimbo, to an extent, did it. His was like his third or fourth season. But Urban did it. He turned Urban. There have been plenty of examples of people turning around in that second or third season after really struggling out of the gates and the Louisiana Monroe losses and the barely beating Nichols State like Kirby did. That doesn't guarantee that Taggart is going to do that. All it's, all it's meant to prove is that you cannot judge how a coach is going to perform long-term by his first few games of his career maybe even his first season I think by the end of the year we can maybe make some educated guesses but it really doesn't you know Georgia lost to Georgia Tech the final game of the 2016 season yeah. the next season they seem to do okay so uh you know I just don't judge it I mean, it's we're just all hard to judge it we were done with Jimbo after the debacle in Raleigh and 12. I mean, that was that was three years. That yeah, was well, they were done with them then. They were done with games. them after the debacle in Winston-Salem the year before. People weren't done with them after the Oklahoma game in 2010, but they no. were certainly disappointed, no. like, what in the world? We're really – we're not anywhere close to where we what need to be. What the hell's going on out there? Um, and that's the, that's where this program is, man. It's just not anywhere near close to be. But I, that's, why, that's why I love being the beacon of hope, because it can get better, folks. It can get better. Plus, you could have lost on Saturday night. And I feel like most first-year coaches are not really doing all that well right now. You know, Dan Mullen lost to Kentucky. It's the first time that program's lost to Kentucky in 31 years. Chad Morris in Arkansas lost to Colorado State. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess Joe Moorhead right Blew now. Blew a lead in that game, right? Didn't yeah. they have a lead and blow yeah. it? Yeah. I think Joe Moorhead and Mississippi State, those, those guys are pretty excited right now. But Mississippi State's only played – I don't even know who they played week one. I don't think anybody that – they played uh, Stephen. They played a guy. They even played a school. They played a guy named Stephen F. Austin. Crazy. And then, but you bring Kansas that up. State. So, in even great success in year one, like you mentioned with Malzahn yesterday, who had great success in year one and got, uh, was a uh, twelve seconds away from winning a national championship. That didn't mean that the program was in great shape. Like, didn't they have a losing record? What, didn't he almost get fired a couple of years after that? Yeah. Like, he was fighting for his job. Last year was. I mean, they were saying if he didn't beat Georgia last year, yeah, he was going to lose that job. So he. And they did beat Georgia, then they Regular lost to him again, yeah. yeah. And the Deep South's oldest rivalry. Exactly right. So, and he's what now, five years in? Well, 13, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 16. So this is a six year. So uh, I, had after to, I had to count on my hands everybody. Right, yes. he actually did, I folks. Really I can did. back that up. He got to that thumb on the sixth, on the second hand um, for number year number six. But it's you, you couldn't, even the people in 2013 that said, wow, this is incredible, we've got the next – We've got the next Nick Saban. This guy's better than Nick Saban. He just beat Nick Saban. Yeah. We got our we've got our guy. Well, two years later, they were they were sure he wasn't the guy, or they were pretty sure he wasn't the guy. It's just really hard after one, certainly one or two games, but even after a season, to know what you got, man. It's not about see. It's not about the season. It's about what you're doing overall with the program and the long term direction of the program. Jimbo's teams didn't look great in ten and eleven. They had moments, but they didn't look great. He was building something though. Mm -hmm. Now it crumbled down, but he was building something, and that something came to fruition in twelve and thirteen and fourteen. You know, if he hadn't done the if he hadn't done the legwork in two thousand ten, he never gets Jameis Winston. Yeah, 
you know, and then and he never gets half those guys. Um, so this is where this is these. I'm not saying this year isn't important. It's vitally important, but it's about establishing culture, building a program, building it back up. That's what that's what this year is for. Well, you know, he still got plenty of games to, to win some important ones, make people feel good about things. You know, to Jimbo obviously started turning the rivalry against Florida and Miami in year one. Yeah, beat South Carolina. Those the were bowl very game. big wins and, and emphatic wins. Good. Both of those. Yeah. yeah, South Carolina win the bowl game was really nice. I think. Hanging with Oklahoma the next season in eleven, even though it didn't work out the way they wanted to, just to, just to be on top of the number one well, team in right, the nation. Well, you, you remember the game in two thousand ten where you were flat out mm-hmm. just outmanned and embarrassed. Right. Then the next year, you're leading them in the fourth quarter. So those were the tangible strides you could point to your fan base. I know it was played in two different locations, but to say, look, last year at this time we got embarrassed by this team. We did not belong on the same field with them. Look how much strides we made in a year. And then he could point to that. It was still a loss. Right. It was a moral victory, as I like to call it. Um, And so that's what you'll be, you know, we'll see. You know, we'll see. I'm really interested in this weekend because it's the first game against a common opponent from last year. And if the people – I know maybe people are expecting Florida State to go up and win at Syracuse and maybe win easily. Remember, guys, last year they they won at home on a missed field goal against this Syracuse team. It was not easy. I think Cam Akers had to run for 200 yards and make some ridiculous runs. Um to win, to to win that game and then you had to survive a missed field goal. So, let's see where this team is from last year to this year against that common opponent in Syracuse. Are they in the game is it the same? Do they lose by three touchdowns? Do they win by three touchdowns? Or is it is it a game that comes down to the final the final few plays, which I think I I'm more inclined to think it'll be that. It'll be a close game late, which so it's the same it, it will be just like it was last year. Close game late. Our friends at the Westgate in Las Vegas have Florida State, surprisingly, as a four-point favorite. Okay, I thought they started like two or two and a half, so some yeah. money's coming in on the Knolls. They liked what they saw that last drive against the Bulldogs. Oh, yeah. Brace. That's a good quarterback, man. I Weirdly, I, I don't – not weirdly. I don't think he's as good as the guy they just played. But Dungy's a good college quarterback, mm-hmm. and he can run too. So he can uh, he can beat you with his feet as well. He's a friend of the program. He sat down and spoke with Wake Up or Chan at the ACC. He did, and I don't remember anything we – did we ever play those at that interview? Yeah, yeah, it was part of the best Do you best remember of. anything we talked to him about? He was from Oregon. I mean, you talked that's about right. – You asked him about his Hall of Fame coach dad, Tony right? Dungy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, we also, I think we asked him about um, just the, the, the stress of being a student athlete because he was an account major or something like that. Right. He was, and you're like, oh, you're you're interning at like a banking house, like in in Manhattan. He's like, no, dude. I'm like, yeah, chill out, Corey. He's in Syracuse. Yeah, don't well, have time right. to drive yeah. all the way back and forth. But it'll it'll be a dogfight. And I don't know. I mean, again, it, and this is boring radio or podcasting. Just we will find out. We'll see soon enough, I guess. Just you know how much strides they can take. I mean, do you expect? You you mentioned. I guess it is a fair sort of. I don't want to call it excuse. Um. But explanation, there's a difference, I think, between explanations yeah, and excuses. Yeah, exactly right. It's a good way to put it. The, the short week, I mean, do you expect maybe that can – if we don't see – this is kind of put you into a tough spot. If we don't see good growth between, you know, what happened in, in, in these two games in, in Tallahassee and Syracuse, does that then set the table that this is going to be a grind-out, potentially nail-biting, miserable season? Absolutely. And, um, yeah, if they don't make drastic improvement – in uh, I you know I just can you with with what he's working with up front I don't know but if if they don't make drastic improvement I mean I think I think unless they I would be very surprised if they came out and won by like thirty points I expect a close game I expect that there's a very good chance they could lose this game um it is not going to be, I mean again they're a four point favorite it's not like this would be a huge upset if they went up there and lost um so it's not I I'm already I guess my answer is I'm already expecting that. I'm already expecting a grinded out type season where every game is close. If they can go up there and surprise me and win by three or four touchdowns and look kind of really good doing it, racing up the field, um, that's what I want to see, man. I want to see this offense get quicker. Um, I want to be. I want this offense to be one of those offenses where they're still showing the replay of the 14-yard Cam Akers run, and they switch back, and the ball's already been snapped. Right. Or they have to do the split screen replay. Yeah, that kind of stuff. They, that's what they need to become. And Willie said as much in his press conference on Monday that um, they're not going as fast as they need to. So I want to see if this week they can really install that and get that going at a at a faster clip. And you know, I know you're complaining about too many freshmen on the field uh, the other day. Um, I do think that for the most part they played. 
the same wide receivers a, a lot of the time. Terry was on the field a ton. Nooney, DJ. Like, there was only about four or five that were playing a lot. Get them – Get them used to this, man. And he also brought up the fact that Francois split reps during August. Well, that was your own making. Though. Well, it was. I mean, he, you know, you have to, you have to have a QB battle. Somebody has to win it. Maybe it was that close. But now this will be the third, well, really the second, third week, second or third week that he's been the absolute starter, right. the lockdown starter. So he should be getting the majority of the reps with the first team, and they should be getting more and more comfortable with this pace because it is kind of ridiculous that you run a hurry up that lets teams substitute freely. You should be snapping the ball when 14 men are on the field. I mean, Sanford the other night was running four guys off at a time. You should already be up at the line ready to snap the ball. How much of that, though, is DeAndre not having reps? How much of that just they're not getting to play in, right? They don't know what play they want to they want. Well, but how, I, and I don't know enough the ma- about the machinations of an offense like yeah. this where, you know, I remember at Oregon, literally that game, you know, that was the only time I saw it live, but – it was what they would get a nine yard run, second one. They're all set with 35 on the clock and they're snapping it with 33. They must have the play. They already know what play one, play yeah. two, and play three is going to be. They're not even looking at signs. I can't imagine. Because you have to, I mean, 11 guys looking over for a sign, and right. I don't know how you could signal it in that quickly. I think it's more like this is your first play, this is your second play, this is your third play. So do something like that because otherwise, yeah, you're snap, you're still snapping it quicker. They ran 81 plays the other night. You're still snapping it quicker than we're used to. But I thought it was going to be like snapping it with 31 on the clock, 32, not 21. That's a lot of time for those guys to get off the field, the Sanford guys. Plus, they're all going to fake injuries anyway, so what does it matter? <laughs> Am I right, folks? Am I right? You are right. More of Corey being right coming up right after this. You're listening to Wake Up War Chant, low-carb beer for the Seminole soul. Back to Aslan and Corey. I secure the bag, then I go get it. I secure the bag, then I go get it. Yeah. Hey, I'm a go get her. Corey, we, we sort of buried the lead. You 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 knocked out a quick little sort of uh summary on Monday. It's Wake Up Board Chains, Corey M. Aslan. About some of the uh the quick hitters from Willie's press conference. I guess let's start off with something serious before we get to the nonsense. I was surprised to hear that Kalen LeBourne, his season isn't um isn't totally toast. That's crazy. I mean, the guy dislocated his kneecap, and Willie's using the word weeks when talking about availability. So he'll be back this season. That's nuts. Dislocated kneecap? You can come back from that? I guess. I mean, that was very um, that was very surprising. That he. I mean, maybe he's back by middle of October. Um, I would have thought you don't usually see somebody get carted off the field with their leg in an air cast yeah. and see them play football again that season. So. I guess it's an, you just locate that bad boy right back where it's supposed to go, let it heal up for a couple of weeks, and then you're ready to go, rub I guess. Some, rub some dirt on it. But also, that, that's really good news for him. Yeah. Obviously, it's good news for the football team. That guy, I think, is a pretty good player. But it's really good news for uh, LeBorn that he's going to be able to play again. Also, Ira Schofel, managing editor of Warchant.com, asked Willie about Nasir Upshur, uh, if he will be available this year. And he says, yes, he will be available for um, – the Syracuse game, and we're assuming moving forward, but he didn't say whether or not it was an injury or uh, per, or uh, disciplinary reason. But I think we assume feel like we can assume it was disciplinary reasons. And yeah. and Nasir actually tweeted about that on Sunday that he'd be back on the he'd be back on the field this weekend. Yeah. But the uh, the top story on there, the the headline, the the image was the backpack. It's also a bunch of posts on the backpack. Man, the backpack and the backpack is not popular. Everybody, no. And that's the the sort of awkward thing of it was. And I thought you did a pretty good job just introducing the question of uh, Willie the backpack. Whose idea was that? Yeah, it, it was kind of like I want to know about this, but do you realize that it, this is not a popular thing? And I, I almost think with the way he responded, he kind of does. That's why my follow up was like, "Do you like it?" Yeah. Like that's why I asked him that, and he didn't say yes, I do like it. He said, "I like getting takeaways," and so hopefully everybody will enjoy to see that. It, it will get to a place where they enjoy seeing the backpack because that means we got another turnover. I need to I, know like what brand. It, I hope it's just like a nine thousand dollar bag. It's not just some bag they got at Macy's. No offense to our friend at Macy's, great retail location, I'm sure. Right. But that bag, there needs to be something special to it. To to secure it. Yeah, yeah. It's look. It's not the best. I obviously we've talked about it before, and it was brought up again on the on the boards about the 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 turnover spear, which would be incredible. I mean, I I don't Too know. Easy. We need Too to let easy. we need to let the players maybe listen to this. 
are write down like a summary, like an elevator pitch, like a one paragraph, this is what would happen. Because what you do, guys, so say Kyle Myers gets that pick in the end zone. Yeah. As soon as he runs off the field, the equipment guy throws him a spear. Probably not the same size as the one Osceola's running around with. That's like eight feet. Yeah. So we're talking about a four-foot spear, something you can you can hold gently. Yeah. There's no fire on the end of it. You're not going to burn a teammate. Some people want to see it actually lit. Well, that, maybe you light it. That's so, a little dangerous, I think. So maybe that's what you do. So my idea was you put a feather on it for every turnover you get, and also after you put the feather on it, you slam it into the ground. You do like – you know when Osceola – well, you didn't know this because you don't know anything, but for the Florida games, he'll jump off the – horse and then hold it to the sky right. and then plant it. Well, every turnover, you hold it to the student section high, or I guess if you're on the road to wherever your fan section is, and then you plant it. You could do that. Obviously, that has you have to do that. You have to plant it hard. But do you put a feather on it, or do you light it on fire and then plant it? Gotcha. What do you do in Syracuse on that turf? Well, I mean, then I guess you just – Throw it into the, that mascot. You just have a you mascot, have a, or you have you bring like a piece of sod with you everywhere, like every game. Oh yeah, a, you get your own dope sod that you yeah. are. You legitimately could start stabbing mascots with it. Tell me that wouldn't get national attention, and people wouldn't make fun of it. They might be horrified. They might be, oh God, what is going on at Florida State? But they wouldn't make fun of it and say it was cheesy. Yeah. They'd be like, actually, that's did they just stab that big orange looking thing from Syracuse with an actual flaming spear? Is that guy okay? They're taking him out on a cart. People would be horrified, but they'd be like, you know what? That's kind of badass. <laughs> What's that's kind of bad. That's a lot cooler than a backpack. Does orange is the, I know Obi, that's the name of the orange for the Orange Bowl. I wonder if the, the Syracuse Orange actually has a name. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe we'll check that out when we pause for a but break. But he needs to have his head on a swivel because in our world, that <clears throat> yeah. spear's coming. It's coming for you. So, yeah, I mean, that would obviously – but people – Rightly think it's kind of a cheesy idea. It is. Willie said that it was the player's idea because, what, they're stealing the bag? What is it? Securing, securing the bag. Securing the bag. Sorry. Here's the problem, though. Securing the bag Doesn't references that mean money. money. Yes. Okay. You can't pay players. This is not a good idea. The, the whole metaphor is lost. Like, you want to talk about we want to make this place lit? Well, then, like, light a spear and then plant it. It's just too easy. Like, there's a spear. It's part of the entire culture of this program. Use it for something. Now we're just going to have a – and the back – like at least use like a duffel bag. Have you never seen – I mean, I know you've seen Bad Boys. Is there not a scene in Bad Boys 2, Willie, <laughs> where there's like a duffel bag they're using for drug money? Yeah, in a heist, you don't have you know, a backpack. Like, Maybe like, like a heist because you're like – you're stealing something. You're stealing the ball from the other team. Yeah. But those are – yeah, you're right. Those are duffel bags. Yeah. Those aren't – they're not wearing Jan Sports. Yeah. Nobody – The town, Ben Affleck and them going into the vault. They're throwing money into black duffel bags. They're yeah. not putting in the they're not putting ostrich them in the, leather. The and then wearing them. So, yeah, there could be there could be something done there. I don't think that's going to be the case. Maybe next year they go with the spear idea. Or maybe teams just stop doing this. At least it's not the trash can, right? The turnover it's trash can. It's much better than the trash can. And what did that? What did the team have last year? Wasn't it a whiteboard? The whiteboard. I mean, oh, it's – man. My favorite was somebody asked Jimbo about it. And Joe was like, we got something. We got something we're working on. And then, like, a week later, like, that's that's what you're working on. Yeah. But, hey, they had five turnovers. They did. So that backpack must be enticing. Good point. So it, it works. It, it works for the purposes of getting turnovers, I guess. But man, uh, it's it's a Open hot button ridicule. issue. It's not, and I think I'm sure there are people listening to this, kind of rolling their eyes, like, "Who cares? It's a backpack. It's some gimmick." And I'm sure there's people on the message boards because there's literally like eight or ten posts about it. But at the same time, what do you want to? What would you rather fo- concentrate on? The the fact that you're one and one and you barely beat an FCS team. At least at least Florida State fans for the moment for the day. We're galvanized around something. They're galvanized around something, and they're not talking about something too seriously. They're not – for a day, they're not asking, is this the right guy for the job? Instead, they're lamenting a backpack. So, all things considered, it could be worse. All right. I want to branch off that topic. We'll, uh, we'll speak about uh, – something I want to reference about a, a Bill Simmons. I've referenced him before, but he has another theory that he always uses in his columns, and I wonder if we're creeping towards possibly something uh, that he's, he's broached before. We'll talk about next. Wake up, Chan. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. 
Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source. It's just me against the world. We're all a little crazy, Corey. Some just a little bit more than others. I think football probably brings out the worst. And most of us, unfortunately, probably brings out... I don't think I'm as bad as I used to be, especially now that I have to you know, behave up in the press box. Although I will say, you're not allowed to cheer in the press box. But there was about as close to cheering um, as you're going to get after... I think it was the Levante Taylor... Pick oh, that really? Sealed it. it was there was a but, lot of, oh. but I I think what happens in those press boxes and Florida State isn't a uh, isn't but, alone in this. You have people that aren't in the press that are watching the game oh, no. from the box and they don't know the rules or no, no, particularly this, care. These are people that that are journalists. Sure, sure, no way. Well, I was out on the field and yeah. I was going crazy. I I hugged Tom Block. I mean, I went I went after it. I started running down. The, I don't know if you saw me, but I was running was down the sideline with him with was my hands you? in the air. Unity. Well, here's the thing. Um, there, there's been a couple tweets put out there, and I think almost the way that Willie kind of was a little bit cagey almost with the way you asked about the turnover bag. There was a tweet from Corey Durden along the lines of, like, you know, the fans here need to, you know, get off our back. Don't be – and I think Levante Taylor's tweeted something similarly. I think it might even be like a quote from a rap lyric. I don't even know. But something along the lines of, you know, don't be a fan later. Like, you right. know, enough with the criticism. Like, when we get this thing rolling, don't come back. And, like, I'm like, I don't want to make a big deal. I Like, I understand you're putting all this hard work in and then your fans. I don't know. I mean, I don't think the fans have booed. I thought the fan turnout was actually pretty good and supportive, very, by and large, of the they Sanford booed game. Aguayo. Did they boo yeah, Aguayo? Yeah, they booed Aguayo twice. I mean, Ricky, you're one for four, bud. You said you felt good about everything inside of 55. Yeah. You know, you're getting our hopes up. Need to ask Willie that on Thursday, if there's any consideration of maybe making Ricky 40 and in. And then maybe Logan. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe so. Out. I mean, he was asked about Ricky, and you know, said he's got to make kicks, which we all agree with right. after the game. Yeah, but I mean, at that point, I don't think you're ready to make a change. But yeah. maybe with a few days, maybe possibly they'll go that way. But I wonder if, if you know, Bill Simmons always wrote this. You know, he had his Ewing theory, which we mentioned once before, where you know people leave a team for dead once their star player goes down. But for some reason, a lot of times in history, teams have found ways to rally around losing their best guy and still playing well. And they always, he also has his uh, us versus the world card. And I wonder if this team is teetering close to that. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying they're going to turn full heel, to use like a wrestling metaphor, but I wonder if there is a feeling in that locker room that this fan base is pretty disappointed with the team already, and they're just like, screw it. We're just going to go out there and play our balls off regardless. And almost like they're going to rally around the fact that there's haters that are I mean, close in the ranks. Sure, man. I guess that if you want to do that, whatever motivation you feel like you need, I, I don't think – I think it's always a bad sign when you use outside influence to motivate yourself. Um, you should be motivated to go win games no matter what your fans are thinking. And, look, you know, Corey Durden might end up being a great player, but what has Corey Durden done? He had a nice pass breakup. At no, the I mean, Virginia but what has he game. done in his career? Yeah. Was he one and one in games that he's played in his career? So what what did these what did these kids expect? And I say kids because they are they're they're closer to seven years old than they are my age. Um, they're closer to tw- you know they're they're not that far out of prepubescent. And what happens is when they get to these schools, and this is certainly not a Florida State centric thing. It goes on everywhere. Florida fan Florida players are getting it too. When you're on Twitter and you live on Twitter and social media and everybody praises you when you're in high school because you're the man, you're a badass, and, and you get all this attention about where is he going to go to school and, and, you, and you adore it, which is natural. I like Twitter attention, I mean, I'm, and I'm 43, so I get why a 19-year-old would. But at the same time, you're going to get criticized when you don't play well. That's just the nature of the beast. What do you expect fans to do, be happy? They're not going to be there. You know, are, are Florida State fans entitled? Sure. Yeah, that's why you're at Florida State. You went to a place that's used to winning. So don't, then don't call out fans for being upset that you're not winning. Now, this does not excuse 
the nonsense that gets tweeted at players. It is ridiculous, and I wish Twitter was much better about just banning people. Do for they life. really get it? Like, do people tweet? Oh, like, I'm sure. At, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At George Campbell, yeah, nice sure. drop bomb. Sure. Like, do people oh, yeah. do that? Not, not as much as people want to make you believe. But yes, it does happen, and those people. I mean, by the way, a, much love for George. I think he's going to come around. He's like, get a life, man. Don't tweet at these people, but also don't tweet at him that, that he's that you're the best either. All right. You know, I mean, but. Just just enjoy the players. Just enjoy the team, but don't feel the need to interact with them on Twitter and tell them how great they are, how terrible they are. I think it's weird. I think that's a weird deal either way. But at the same time, man, you know, I, I've seen it on social media a bunch this last three or four days where just it, not a bunch, but some where these the Florida State players feel like the te- the fans of uh, well, his last three tweets. Okay, so the last three tweets from Corey Durden. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, his actual tweet is, these last two weeks have really showed us who support us and who don't. 100 emoji. When we get this thing rolling, y'all just stay on the other side of the fence, and it's like a, a circle with a slash through it and then a ball cap. I don't know what that means. And then he retweeted Nasir Upshur, who said, if you're rocking with us, do that. It get greater later. Shout out to the real Noel fans. And then lastly, again, to this, the whole uh, turnover backpack, he retweeted a, a person a uh, media entity that said the Florida State turnover backpack is not a turnover backpack. It's securing the bag. So this is kind of like get off our back about this. So You don't get it. And also all of you who aren't supporting us right now, uh, just beat it. So as somebody that obviously I've known Florida State football forever, it's like, man, you're criticizing a fan base that watched their team score three points in the first game coming off a, a, a horrific 7-6 and six season. Careful, Corey. I think you're almost going to start. I mean, you're but you're, be criticizing you're, him for doing this. You're criticizing. You, you have three points in the opener. Get kind of embarrassed on national television, coming off a horrific one of the worst seasons in 40 years. The next game, you're you're losing in the fourth quarter against Sanford. Meanwhile, there were what 70,000 people at your game. There, were, I mean, yeah, and that started at almost two hours late. That started two hours late. There were 70,000 people at your game, and you're telling them that they're not real fans. It, well, it does say these last two weeks have shown us who support us and who don't. Well, you who know who don't. supports you is the people that are in the stands yeah. and also the people that buy the merchandise, the people that watch you on TV. Again, I would just – these these kids and their kids, they don't understand that Twitter isn't real life, man. That's not the real <laughs> fan base. Yeah. Those people that are tweeting at you are real people, and maybe they're fans. Maybe they went to Florida State. But that's that's the lunatic fringe. The people that would tweet at a player – is the lunatic fringe. That is 0.1% of the Florida State fan base. Just like the people on the message board that, that tweet that, that just go crazy with the nonsense, you can't judge Florida State fans solely on the people that tweet at you in message boards. You can't. That's not real life. But these kids, because they grew up with it and interact with it, think that's real life and think, man, these fans, they don't, they're, they're, they're awful. They're really mean. Nah, dude, wait till you win eight games in a row. You're going to get mm-hmm. nothing but love. You're going to get nothing but love. And I thought that was a really good thing that Willie said. I didn't even ask him about it. I was asking about something else. But he brought it back to, you know, he told the players that if you want people to say and write nice things about you and to you, play better. Win games. That's how it works. And that's exactly how it works. What has Florida State done in these two weeks, literally in these two years, to have to have undying, unwavering, 100%, we know you're going to do it, support? Obviously, these people support Florida State. They want them to win, but there's a reason they're cynical. And I just, again, judging judging a fan base by the crazies that tweet at players, you, then other than Tuscaloosa and maybe Athens, you're going you're gonna to hate all the fans. They're all like that. But also, if you ever get into trouble with the law, they'll probably defend you to the hilt. Got to take the good with the bad. Hey, man. What about yeah. the fans that tweet at podcast host and talk smack? What about those people? Are they part of the lunatic fringe? I mean, you know, Aslan, that's something you have to deal with more than more than I do. I get a lot of just love and praise. And, folks, keep that going. I mean, look, I know I'm good. I don't need that, that extra motivation. I don't need the, uh, the, the slaps on the back. But they're, all, they're appreciated. Like, I'm going to be great whether you care, whether I get positive feedback or not. Yeah. Aslan, on the other hand, I mean, I feel like the negative feedback, let's veer away from that for a little while. See how he reacts with some positive feedback. That might just – that might be the spark. Let's bring it back. Let's wrap it up right after this. Wake Up War Chant. You're listening to Wake Up War Chant Low Carb Beer for the Seminole Soul. 
Back to Aslan and Corey. I will update the overall yearly standings when we uh, reconvene tomorrow, but on the over-under, which we'll do again on Friday, we both went two for five, Corey. Two and five. Two and five. Yeah, I'm sorry. Two for seven. That's rough. Yeah. That's 286. Uh, That's not cutting it. I did not provide an answer to the over-under on 50 total points scored for Florida State. I I don't know what I would have done. We're going to assume you got it wrong. Yeah. But uh, you got correctly the under on uh, Florida State rushing yards, 250. You went under. You got correct on that one. And then DeAndre Francois, touchdown passes three. Well, actually, we really we both got that one wrong because he did throw for three. We just said push. Yeah. I'm take, give me a right one for that. All right. So I, I, I think, got that one right. And that's actually what I did give you right. And then I gave myself that one right. And then I got correctly James Blackman playing time one quarter. I said under. Yeah. You said it was going to be over. I just we, thought Francois would get hurt. Yeah, we both said over on Florida State of uh, longest punt return, 15 yards. DJ Matthews returned one for eight. Uh, Didn't have a lot of chances there. The yeah. kid, the kid that punted was actually their quarterback <laughs> in a lot of rugby 30 yarders. Yeah. Kalen LeBourne, we both went over on touches, but obviously that he should got be. Injured. That's not our fault. Yeah, yeah. true. Uh, I feel like that should even count. We should be two and four. Logan Tyler punting average 42. We both said under, and he dazzled with a 46.4. By the way, with a Logan, long of 59, three Logan, of them inside 20. He had a 59-yard punt? Yeah, so much as long. Logan, uh, we, know you, we know you listen to this show and, and like it a lot. Senator Tyler. Um, quit kicking it down, straight down the middle of the field. Even if for whatever reason your coaches are telling you that's where we want you to kick it, right at the returner, right in the middle of the field, don't listen to them. Try to angle that bad boy one way or the other. Yeah. Right down the middle of the field isn't ideal. All right. Announced attendance was 65,000. We both said under, and then it was actually announced over that. So shout out to the fans, even if some of the f- For players real, don't like shout you. out to the fans. Y'all went out even after an awful season opener against Samford five days later with a ridiculous hour and a half rain delay, quote unquote weather delay. Man, they stayed at least through the yeah. first half. I mean, and then it's again, like for. that's kind of what bothers me about people within the program and players criticizing this fan base because of the nonsense on social media. Were you not at the game? How many people did you want there? They showed up. So quit acting like you don't have good fans. You do. It's 2018. There's a lunatic fringe in every fan base. And if you're going to judge fan bases by Twitter, well, then good luck. Don't play football. Because literally there's not one fan base other than Tuscaloosa where you're going to get positivity almost all the time. It's just not how it works. How do you think the Florida fans were dealing with the players after their lost, first loss to Kentucky since Miami Vice was on TV? You know, I mean, they probably were a little upset, and the Florida fans probably got – and are the Florida players like, hey, ride or die with us? The real fans are the ones that tell us we're awesome even when we barely beat Samford. It's just, again, they're 19. They don't know any better. They don't have life experience. But heaven to Betsy, man, understand that social media isn't the fans. That's not the fan base. The fan base is the people that were in that stadium going crazy when you scored in the final four minutes to take the lead against Sanford. It was legitimately loud in that place. It was. And when Levante Taylor had a pick six, that place was genuinely loud. It was against Sanford. So get off that nonsense about how bad the Florida State fans are, man. They were there for that game. Realize that. And I hope Willie... Have, I mean, I don't want Willie to keep these kids off Twitter. I don't, I don't necessarily think that's the answer. I would like him to maybe say, hey, you don't have to look at your mentions. Right. You don't have to. Just tweet something and go on with it, um, whatever, you, whatever you want to do. But also I hope he, he makes them realize, man, you had – these fans showed up for you. Even after the debacle of Monday night, they showed up and they stayed and were cheering like crazy at 1230 in the morning. Yeah. For a win you barely got against Sanford. And then two days later, you're going to criticize them? Would it be fair if we asked the players later today that we get their thoughts on if they – Yeah, I, man, to me, I, stuff? I, what, I, what I don't like it? about that is, uh, it, the, number one, if they're not expecting it, they might not know how to react. They might say something that they don't mean. I would like more than anything to have a conversation with them. Like, man, what, like, what do you think should be the fans? What, do you really judge the people that were in that stadium? Do you think they're all the same people that are tweeting at you? No. Like, why would you, why would you give the people, why would you, why would Corey Durden, 
And I'm we're just we're I'm not picking on Corey Durden. There's a lot of people that think like him and a lot of football players. He's certainly not the only one. It's just the only one that we mentioned. Why did Corey Durden on Saturday night tweet out Thanks so much for the fan support, Noel fans. That was awesome. What a great win. I don't see Probably that. not, right? Yeah. I, I, and I asked that. It was rhetorical. I'm almost positive he didn't. I could be wrong, yeah. but I'm pretty sure he did not. So does that not matter? Like the stuff that you get sent to you on Sunday and Monday means more to you? That's the stuff you have to comment on? Not the 70,000 people that were in the stands for a game against an FCS school after you got embarrassed on national television five days prior? I feel like that's the judge. That's how you judge a fan base. Okay. Anyway, I'm off. I'm, I'm off my high well, horse. Well, that was good. Uh, you almost got a little, little, little Aslan Francois uh, salt in you there on that one. That was well, good. I just, I, I get that they're upset that people are tweeting nasty things at them, and I know I have more perspective because I'm older. But also, I've never been in a state. I've never ever felt what it feels like to get a sack and have eighty thousand people cheer for me. Right. What an awesome feeling that must be. But you posted a column and you got. Like, oh, yeah, man, that's the same thing. The closest I can say is when it, we are the corner pocket in spirit. People coming up, yeah. saying saying how much they like the show and everything. That's fun. I get it. But I would never then, like three days later, go, all you wake-up war chant listeners, <laughs> you're either with us or against <laughs> us. I know Aslan's crazy. I know he says nonsense, but he's going to get it right. And when he does, you're going to want to be a part yeah, of this. Can't but be if, a fan later. Can't yeah, subscribe you're later. Be, <laughs> not going to be a fan of Aslan later. You better be a fan of his now. Anyway, I'm off my high horse. Corey Durden, I've talked to him once, seemed like a really nice guy. I think he's just – he's young, and they'll get it, I hope. I hope I hope the people that need to explain to these guys explain it to them, that Twitter isn't real life. I think part of the reason Gene and Ira brought me on to War Chant is because I think they thought maybe we needed some youth you know, within the, the ranks. The youth movement, the mid-30s youth movement. Get a little younger. <laughs> but when I saw them tweet out that the Northern Illinois game is going to be a 330, I was so excited, Corey. I, yeah. I'm not a 3.30. I was never a 3.30 guy. I was. I wanted every single game, as long as I can remember, I always wanted 8 o'clock. Like, I want 8 o'clock prime time. No, I, no, se- no. I don't want it anymore, Your man. Your Saturday night's done. It's toast. Like, the people listen to this, you're like, okay, man, game's over at 11.40. We still got a couple hours. We can go out. Yeah. We can go tailgate. Wrong. Uh-oh, we're leaving. Wrong. I got home. I got. I wrote my column and posted it at 4 a.m. Yeah. Like, I, wrote, I got home at 2.30. I, after interviews, I, we did our thing on the field, and then I drove home and started writing at 2.30. Yeah. So, it took me, if you've read it, it took me a little over an hour and a half to write that nonsense, but I did. Um, Damn good call. And it was at 4 o'clock in the morning, man. That's, yeah. yeah. But 3.30, get, noon games are the best, quite honestly. Uh, no, I know see, I won't go that far. That. I can't sleep in. Uh, so, 3.30, you can, I can sleep in, yeah. and I can catch some football towards the end of the night. The problem, though, is what you'll find out about 3.30 games is you're still – like, I won't leave the press box until probably, probably 10.30. So, it's still kind of late. Jeez, really? Yeah. What I loved about 8 o'clock games when I worked at the newspaper is our deadline was our deadline. Right. 1 o'clock. So, 12.30, whatever it is. I got to be done at 12.30. After that, don't matter. I'll see you all later. Meanwhile, Ira Ward Chant would still be working for two hours in the press box. Sucker. I'm six ultras deep. <laughs> <laughs> Just living the life. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, uh, hopefully uh, hopefully the Twitter stuff, and that wasn't the only thing but, uh, with the players, but – um, I know Janarius Robinson had one too. I just and I and I do like. Daddy, I thought he was just telling the fans to wear black. Oh no, I thought it was something else on our message boards. But I, you know, I do like. I do hope that Willie doesn't just. What I'm scared of is because it started so rocky, and fans are fans. And quite frankly, Florida State football players aren't used to this because they haven't interacted on social media before. They haven't been allowed to. So there will be some growing pains. But I do think there's some accountability that comes along with this. I think there's some thick skin that has to be grown. I think there's – and, again, I'm not condoning the nonsense. That's, and I'm not talking about people just saying, man, you guys need to play better. The people that tweet awful stuff to these players, I'm not condoning it. It's right. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But we can't change but you, we, we can't change their minds. We can probably change the practical mind of a Corey right. Durden easier but than – Exactly. But also, like, you, you, can't, you can't judge a fan base on those people. Yeah. Just like I don't judge Florida State fans by the, the people that tweet nasty stuff to me. I judge that person. That's it. It's not a idiot. sweeping generalization. Loser. Yeah, you're an idiot. If you don't think I'm good at my job, stupid. You're a dumbass, right? Point I mean, blank, straight up. Uh, turn that down, people. If you if you have a kid in the car, don't mean to don't mean to cuss. But obviously, if you don't think I'm doing a good job, then you don't you don't you don't know journalism. You, you, you don't, don't know, know what's going on. You don't, you don't know, know wit. You don't know life. Um, but yeah, so I hope I hope they realize that that's not that Twitter is just that. It's Twitter, man. It's those people give more credence. 
and more importance to the people that are at the games that are cheering for the you ones that line up the legacy walk for you. There was a good turnout. The legacy walk two yeah. hours before kickoff. Everybody lined it up and was cheering for you guys. And yeah. So I hope. I hope. Fives. But but even my point was I hope Willie doesn't. I think a real problem with this program over the last couple of years was that it was it, when you talked about it's us against the world. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think that's all that healthy. I don't think it's we're all in this together. Everybody screw everybody else. It's just us in this room. Man, you have worked in major league though. You have a hundred thousand hundreds of thousands of fans that want to celebrate with you. They yeah. want to cheer you on. Don't don't create them as the enemy. That it's only us in here. They don't care about us. They only like us when we're doing well. That's not true. You just got embarrassed on national television, 24 to 3. You had 70,000 fans in the stands the 5 days later for Stanford. There are many people that cheer for you and are very, very good fans. Don't lose sight of that because of the Twitter nonsense. That would be the conversation I would have with those players that feel like they're being wronged, and they're just not used to it. They're just not used to being criticized because they've been badasses their whole life. They're not used to losing. Last year they couldn't even be on Twitter, certainly couldn't respond, even if they saw something they hated. Even if they read their mentions, I'm sure they were they wanted to respond, but they knew they couldn't. Now they can. Just be, you know, think before you hit send, everyone. Like think her. before you like hit her. send. Don't press send. How about Herm? How about my guy Herm? Two and oh, son. Go, man. Take Did you see him before the game? They had him mic'd up. No. He's like, leave it all on the grass. Leave it all on the grass. Like he got. It was awesome. It was. It and then was, they went on a. Was it a last second field goal? Yeah. yeah. Nice man. Took down number fifteen. See Michigan how Michigan State. Michigan State's missing old Harlan Barnett, aren't Falling they? Falling apart. That two minute defense there is uh, just crumbling. Uh, we don't have more. We don't really have a lot more to talk about, Corbin. Was there anything that we didn't go over from Willie's press conference that people need to know about that caught your ear? Um. No, I mean, I have football related. Like I said, I think we touched on it. We'll touch on it again, obviously, later in the week and later and all throughout the season. Is is obviously the offense isn't where he wants it, mm-hmm. and they're 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 they've just got to rep it. They've got to get better and better at it. You know, they've only had two games. They've run 140 plays with it in real game action, real game speed, and they're gonna. He, I, I assume he thinks, and they will get better at it. They're going to improve. He did say that Francois got much better at the read plays. Where is he? Do you think? Is he top twenty quarterback in the nation? Francois, yeah, mm, no. top fifty though, right? Top, f- yeah, oh yeah, he's certainly better than half of yeah. the quarterbacks in the country. I don't know that he's top twenty. Um, see, so going into seventeen, so I would have said that he was though, top right? twenty. We don't watch enough football, yeah, we're and I don't see enough other quarterbacks. And it's also it, it's hard to gauge because of the the different offenses, the different systems, the different right. weapons. Right. But he was locked in. It's, it's, it sounded like overall Willie was pleased with, with Man, DeAndre's I thought, play. And I, was, I thought he played really well, too. Other than if you just go ahead and scrap the throws behind the line of scrimmage mm-hmm. and just throw it downfield, I, I thought he was really good. I mean, he also – how long would the George Campbell touchdown have been if he'd have caught it? 70 yards? That yeah. cost him a 70-yard touch. I mean, yeah. he, he dropped it in there. About as well as you can drop a throw in there. The Gavin drop over the middle of the field was a really good throw. I don't remember that one for some reason. It was the, I think it might have been their first drive. Okay. And they had to punt. Like it was third. Oh, they challenged it, didn't they? They caught it. They were going yeah. fast and yeah. they actually and stopped they and challenged it. it. Okay, and they, yeah, he didn't, he didn't yeah. catch it. Man, you got to make that play. I don't think it was a third down play, but it would have gotten them to the 40, and then they yeah, ended up Keith's having to punt. not doing good on these 50 50 balls. Man, you got to go make plays, man. Yeah. You're, you At some point, maybe you just say to yourself, you know what? I'm Keith F. and Gavin. But hey, you know what? Actually, Willie did say that he was talking about con- Continuity and synergy, and then they might limit. I don't. Know, maybe I'm reading too much, but I thought he was almost talking about they were going to pare down the personnel groupings. It almost sounded like he was saying something about we, you know, during the game. The reason the offense was working a little bit better later in the game was that they kind of had limited the amount of guys they were bringing off the bench. They were running the same guys out right. there for all the plays, and they were getting a little more comfortable in rhythm. So that's something I've been kind of harping on. So that, that was a little bit encouraging to yeah, hear him say. Yeah, and they, I mean, obviously they had that nice final drive, uh, take away the Matthews crazy play on the reverse thing, the the pass oh, of all seven man. yards. Other than that, every drive, every play was a was a positive one. They did really well on that drive, I thought. Francois was good when he had to be. And, yeah, you know, it, it will be interesting. I know we'll wrap up here, but it will be interesting to see them on Saturday – I'm not expecting 50 points. No, I don't even no. know if I'm expecting 30 points. They, but you hope. need to get, you need to find a way to start getting this thing rolling. Right. And if that means he even said they have a lot of plays, they may, you know, he said that after the game, the play, the amount of plays isn't the problem. Is running the ones that we run really well. Um. So may this is again. I'm going to say it again, but this is the week where I'm going to judge how much improvement. This is the week one to week two jump that I want to see. Okay. 
Like Penn State had it against Pittsburgh after the yeah. almost loss. Will Florida State have a similar jump with a real week? And will they run? Will this thing look much different than it did last week when they had to play two games in five days? That's a tough ask. No matter who that second game is against, they've had a full week now. They they've got they've had guys that have made plays when it mattered under the lights. You feel like after two weeks, you should know who your better players are on that line and who your better skill players are. And can you start running this thing with some quickness? Is Francois getting ninety percent of the reps with the ones, so they can get a feel for each other and just rip it all the way down the field against Syracuse? They're gonna wear white on gold. In case uh, you guys wondered about that sort of stuff, I also maybe go with garnet pants. But so is the but you think the backpack is always gonna be garnet, or will it be a white backpack because they're on the road? Oh, good. What gosh. if they pulled like a baby out of there? <laughs> Gosh. Or a puppy, we're something. Done. Maybe we're not done. a baby. A we're baby's done. probably too much. Let's go to but work. A, but a puppy. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Thanks for listening. It's Wake Up War Chant. Basad Cemetery, Osceola and Renegade, and of course, the War Chant. These are great traditions known to all Seminole fans. If you are a card-carrying, garnet and gold-wearing knoll, don't you deserve a site that is truly dedicated to covering FSU sports? Warchant.com staff has over 50 years of experience covering the Seminoles. Warchant.com is the only FSU outlet with a full-time recruiting analyst in Tallahassee. Plus, it's the only site with a full-time videographer and a daily podcast, 100% dedicated to FSU sports. Why act like Gators and settle for second best? Warchant.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.